thanks to Love Books for inviting me to talk about my new novel that's coming out in eight days' time. Villa of Secrets. I'm very excited about it and I hope you enjoy it anyway. Let me know. <laughs> well, um, Love Books have sent me a list of questions to answer. So I thought I would do it in a video again. The first question they ask me is, what book truly inspired my way of life? Two of the books that um, made the largest impression on me were Wild Swans by Jung Chang and Angela's Ashes by Frank McCall. And both of them very different from each other, but fascinating. Reading about Jung Chang's grandmother and the foot binding made such an impression on me. I realised how stupid we are as women, distorting our feet and suffering constant pain simply in order to look sexy to men. If we're that senseless, then we don't really deserve equality. I thought about all the women I'd known that strutted about in crippling shoes. Only in grown toenails, bunions, corns, osteoarthritis, back pain, and eventually artificial knee and hip joints that probably come down to ridiculous shoe choices. Podiatrists call it shoeicide. My extreme stilettos went into the bin after I'd read that book, Wild Swans, and I've never bought another pair since. I still wear high heels, but not, that, not those, not the ones that have you in pain. How did I pick who to dedicate my book to? Well, Bertie and I. We met when I was 15. I didn't have a boyfriend, he didn't have a girlfriend. And so it just, <laughs> it just went out together for that reason. And we fell in love. And um, yes, we've been married for nearly 50 years. Hmm two beautiful children and three gorgeous grandchildren. Very lucky. Um, so my first novel, Island of Secrets, I have to do this, I'm learning the job. Uh, Island of Secrets was dedicated to him. Villa of Secrets, my second novel, I've added my um, children. And my next novel, I shall add my grandchildren. There you go. Uh, did I do a lot of research for my book? Yes, weeks perhaps in total, months. I spent more time researching than actually writing. And for me, the research is the most enjoyable process of writing a what story. What was my favorite read of 2017? Gone Girl, I think. I really enjoyed Gone Girl. Everybody sympathised with the husband, but I was right there with the wife, you know. <laughs> I thought she was great, yeah. Complete nutcase, of course, but great nevertheless. If I could take three books on a desert island, what would they be? Now, I've come up with um, Donna Tart, The Goldfinch, Louis de Bernier, Captain Corelli's Mandolin, and Nikos Kazantzakis, Silver the Greek because it's a classic and I like the film too. But then I'd probably get tired of them all, Desert Island. So I'm thinking, I'm on a desert island. I've built my tree house, learned how to fish. And now I'm bored to death with my, oh, I won't have a laptop. Oh, no laptop either. So how am I going to write? I'd need Roger at Theosaurus because I love it and I can browse it for hours. I love looking up new words. Hmm. Then for a bit of culture, I'd want the complete works of William Shakespeare, because I think he's great. And of course the Bible. I'm not religious, not at all, but there are so many deliciously wicked stories in the Bible. So that's what I take. But then I thought about it some more and I wondered what I would write with no pen. 
So I would probably have to sharpen a bit of bamboo and write with my own blood. <laughs> yeah, that's messy, isn't it? But my publishers would love it and they'd probably, you know, I'd become a celebrity anywhere. No top author would go anywhere without the Michael Kors and the special book signing pen. So, no, I'm being silly. Back to my first choice, the goldfinch, because Tart's a fine writer. Corelli, because I think I understand the politics after, after researching for Villa of Secrets <laughs> and Zorba the Greek. I knew a fisherman in Crete who bore a remarkable resemblance to Anthony Quinn as Zorba. Even though Anthony Quinn wasn't Greek, of course, he was Mexican. Right, next question. Can you tell us a little about your publishing story? Sure. Every year I set myself a challenge and treat it like a part-time job. I've managed quite a few things over the years. Great dancing, building, sailing, guitar, I can plaster. Self-sufficiency by like writing a novel. It took a year and the next year I challenged myself to get it published. I didn't, of course. I didn't know anything. I just thought I'd just do it by myself and I'd be successful. <laughs> so I dropped the writing and I moved on to photography and then I did a year of painting. And a few years later, I moved house and I dug up a machine gun in my garden in Crete. An investigation as to why it was led to Island of Secrets, which has been amazingly successful. Sold 125,000 copies in 12 weeks. That was good going. Um, can I share with you a photo that tells us? I could do, but I can't find it. Um, when I was going past roads on a ferry, uh, I took a photograph of it and there was Mount Philermos with a great big cross at the top of it and I took a photograph with my long lens. Now I can't find the photograph but um, this is one of the things that inspired me to write Villa of Secrets. This is where Dora's heart was broken, where she shot two people that she loved and admired. And this is where Dora's true love lies buried. So all I have to do is find the photograph. And if I can't, I'll have to get on a ferry and go and take another one. Also, I was inspired by the villa. When I saw the villa, there had to be a story there. It's so romantic and just beautiful, just beautiful. And the other place was the village church in uh, Ebonaz, up in the mountains. What would I like readers to know before starting my book? That the basic story is true, and all the locations in the book exist. The tunnel that leads to Seven Springs is a beautiful place, and that is well worth a visit. See if you have the nerve to go down the viaduct without a light. I'd be very pleased if you took a photograph under the rusty ladder and sent it to my website. I'm going to dedicate a page to all those brave tourists that do send me a picture of themselves there. Um, 
Do I have any questions that I'd like to ask my readers? Oh, lots. Which character has I mean, moved you? That scene where 10 year old Naomi hears her parents' boat. I cry every time I read it. Uh, a second question. Which scenes, paragraphs, lines did you really like? I try hard with scent and so I wonder, did you find yourself smelling with a funny handle? The basil on the patio, the German sour breath. A third question. Was the ending satisfying? Believable. Fourth question. Did the setting interest you? And did the description seem vivid and real? Does it make you want to come to Rhodes? I hope you enjoy Villa of Secrets. Remember, I wrote it for you. And if you took pleasure from it, please let me know. Amazon reviews are so important to me. If you have the time, as little as two or three words makes a huge difference to my day. But more important than anything is that you do enjoy the book.